It's Brian Preston, the money guy. Uh, so this next question, this is actually a, a question from Facebook. We're hitting all of our socials today. This is from Scott. He says, uh, one thing I've never heard you clarify about your net worth statement is you don't state whether it's just cash or your properties and cash. Now, when he's saying cash, I'm going to assume he's saying liquid investments. When, when you do a net worth statement, is it just your liquid investments or does other stuff go on there? He says, the talk seems to make it seem like it's just your cash. But that's not your true net worth. Can you clarify that, please? Because I want to know if I'm behind, if it's just liquidity, or if I'm way ahead. So what yeah. should go in our net worth statement? How should we think about our net worth statement? Are there different components of our net worth statement that we ought to like zone in on? First of all, a net worth statement is going to have everything on everything. it. I think that's the, the important thing. The only things you don't put on a net worth that you would put more on the footnotes or disclosures is promised income streams. Mm -hmm. You know, So if somebody's promising you, like Social Security, that's a promised income stream. It's not something that goes on your, your, your balance sheet or net worth mm -hmm. statement. Now, there is a difference if you have a pension that maybe every year they send you an annual statement that tells you what your you know, lump, sum benefit, lump is. sum benefit is right now, but there's a potential that it's going to turn into a promised string of, um, of, you know, of income streams mm -hmm. for you to cover expenses in retirement. You could put the lump sum on your annual net worth. That's actually an asset that you have access to. But here's what I, where I think this thing gets confusing, and I want to make sure we clarify, is that you will break it, your net worth between it's it's you know the easy answer is it's assets minus liabilities is your net worth. That sounds so simple to say those three simple components, but assets is going to be broken out mm -hmm. into different components. You're going to have your your cash, yep. which is extremely liquid. That's cash and equivalents. You'll have liquid investments, meaning that yes, they're not cash, but they are liquid in the fact that you could turn them into cash within three, Couple four, days. five yep. days. And then you'll have your non-liquid investments, which is like your real estate mm -hmm. and other things like that. And then there's also going to be your non-investment capital. That's your personal assets. That's your primary automobiles. residence, your automobile, those type of things. Um, and and I, I don't mind sharing that Bo and I on non-investment personal assets, we do some, some tactics to kind of keep us from getting too overheated or excited about where our net worth is. And that's like on our primary residence. We live in Nashville yep. or south of Nashville. It's hot. I mean, it is white hot. We got so many folks moving from California, Chicago. I mean, all over the place are moving to Nashville. Mm -hmm. um, they're bidding up prices and have housing because they think our real estate's a nickel. Mm -hmm. um, even though compared to other places in the southeast, we're, we're a pretty high cost of yep. living state. And um, I don't, ins I don't want that to make me feel like my net worth has gotten crazy big just because my house is appreciated right. on paper. So I still value my primary residence at actual cost of the house, like what you original um, yeah, mortgage. Yeah, you know, it, it, just because price. I don't. That's 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 something that provides me shelter. That's something I live mm -hmm. in. So I don't want that to get overinflated. And then when I talk about liquid um, investments or liquid net worth, I'm talking about not only my cash and equivalents. I'm talking about my after-tax investments. Mm -hmm. and in some way, I am mean, talking about my retirement sure. assets in my IRAs, my Roth accounts, even my, um, my 401ks, mm -hmm. because those things are, I could get access to them. Now, I wouldn't. I would never touch that rail because that's going to be the money I need for retirement. But it is something I could turn to cash very quickly, mm -hmm. and that's why I consider it to be a liquid investment. One thing that drives me nuts, and I don't know why this analogy came to my head, but I'm going to share it because, you know, we're live and oh, <laughs> nobody can really stop me. Uh, it, have you ever, like, done the thing where you were going to do a workout regimen or whatever, right? And you want to lose weight. And so what is the first thing we all do before we ever start lose, like wanting to lose weight? We take some pictures, right? And so we'll do like a before picture. Well, they ever noticed like, or maybe I've had friends who did this. Like they take their before picture and like they suck in and they flex and they try to like make their before picture look good. I would really, do the really... exact opposite. I would blow my belly out. That's right. If I, if so, right. I'm trying to make it look good. I feel like a lot of times when I get to see people's financial situation, they'll show me their net worth statement and I'll be like, oh my, this thing is so inflated. Like this is not your real net worth statement. We land on the other side of that equation. We try to do a lot of stuff to keep it conservative so that we actually can track our true net worth. It's why we don't allow the value of our real estate to increase. It's why we have reasonable valuations for things that aren't like incredibly liquid right now and today. And one thing that both of us do, just because I think it's helpful, we actually, in addition to like, you know, mortgage or auto loans or whatever kind of debt that you have, 
We also put in our liability section deferred taxes, right? So if you have a lot of assets that are in 401ks and IRAs, there's nothing wrong with having a liability there that shows, hey, how much tax is going to be associated with that? Or if you have a business that you might sell one day, if you're going to value the business and the asset side, I think you should put the tax or the estimated tax cost of what that business is on the liability side. So that way you can see your true net worth. It's just a way to keep yourself conservative so you don't get too proud of yourself. You say, oh, look how great I'm doing. You know, it's kind of showing the real picture. I, I think that's an advanced planning strategy I do after your net worth exceeds seven figures. I okay, don't want sure. people to lose focus by putting a tax because that that deferred taxes column can get somewhat complicated because some's going to be long-term capital sure. gains. Some's going to be tra taxes, ordinary income. I'm all for it. We do indeed do it. That's, that's showing how nerdy we are. But it is one of those things where I think that you don't have to focus on that until you, you get past that first seven-figure goal because – Look, I want wealth creation to seem approachable mm -hmm. and easy, just like this show is. If we, we we try to feed you just enough information to keep you on your journey, but you can get really deep in the weeds really quick because this is exciting stuff. And I love sharing these little tips, but I don't want you to get overwhelmed before you've had the ability to build the knowledge, build the assets, because I'm telling you, stick with this, stick with what we share on this show. Guys, the abundance cycle works. Mm -hmm. That's why we can just give it to you for free, let you learn, apply, grow. I have no doubt you do everything we share. A few years down the road, you will be reaching out to, to work with us because complexity just happens naturally and we'll be there.